Hey health junkies, Dr. Krause here. Just wanted to jump in and let you know about a new feature that I'm adding to the podcast. It's the ability to ask me questions. I've had a ton of folks tell me that they would love for me to cover their questions on the podcast, so I'm going to do it. So each week I will be adding a couple of questions that I'm going to answer to each of the podcasts. And if it's a juicy enough question, I just may dedicate a whole podcast to it. So if you're interested in asking a question, head on over to my website at drjkrausnd.com. Check out a blue button on the right-hand side that says Ask a Podcast Question. Hit me up there. Or you can also access the button through my podcast notes also on my website. So head on over there, ask me some questions. I look forward to answering them soon. All right, let's get on with the podcast. Hey, health junkies. It's time for The Health Fix. Join your host, Dr. Janine Kraus, as she gives you a dose of what you need to know and do right now to take control of your health from the inside out to rebel against aging, look damn good, fight stress, and laugh every day. Hello there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Kraus, and today we're going to be talking all about light therapy for pain, skin issues, metabolism, and mood. This episode came out of an interest that I have in really breaking down the three therapies and and utilizing them in my office, but also from the questions that my patients bring up every single day about which light therapy should they choose for the certain condition that they're struggling with. So, of course, I went into it and did a little bit more research on top of what I knew and wanted to share it with you all in terms of light therapy. So first and foremost, one of the big things to think about is that we are like plants. We need food, we need water, and we need light. And if we don't get that light, we become weak, our immune systems crash, and we get really moody and crabby. Now, if you've ever been to the Pacific Northwest or Tacoma where I live, you will find that in the wintertime, it's pretty dark here. It rains a lot, and we don't see a lot of sunshine. And it does mess with your mood. You get grumpy. And on days when the sunlight comes out, my goodness, you feel amazing when you get that sun just baking on you. And you'll notice that animals too gravitate towards light and and sun. And so we are still cavemen. We are still animals. We forget about it, but it's really important to keep in mind that we need light to survive. Now it's the type of light that matters in terms of what type of treatment you're going for in this case. And in particular, I'm going to go through what full spectrum light can do for you compared to red light compared to infrared. And I'm gonna go through all that today. So let's get started. So first and foremost, we have to take a trip back in time to the 1860s when James Clerk Maxwell, he was a Scottish physicist, proposed the concept of electromagnetism. He concluded that because light moves in waves, it doesn't need a medium to travel through. Light must be made up of both electric and magnetic fields. And so in finding this out, he then determined that light has a type of emission. And that emission is an electromagnetic radiation, and that can be measured in in a spectrum to measure light. And it's, it's known as nanometers, which are one billionth of a meter in terms of their size and measurement. Now, from what Mr. Maxwell came up with, we have another physician and scientist, Niels Ryberg Finson, who actually won the Nobel Prize in 1903 for his work on treating smallpox with light therapy. Now, beyond him, there were multiple other folks who did research. John Harvey Kellogg, in particular, in 1910, wrote a book, Light Therapeutics, on the benefits of red light and infrared heat in his book. And then NASA took all of this on and started to do research in space with red light therapy for plants. And they found that the plants grew really well when exposed to red lights. And these same astronauts also discovered that their mood improved when they were exposed to these lights and their healing time for wounds also improved. So that's pretty darn cool. 
So I love the fact that we've got a lot of research here on the red light therapy, the infrared therapy, and it goes way back. All right, so let's talk about the three main types of light therapy that we're going to go through today. Now, light therapy in general, when you hear that term, it's referring to full spectrum light. That is light that's 100 times brighter than being outside. This is good for dark places like Tacoma, Washington in the middle of the winter. It's good for places like Illinois where I grew up when it's dark and gray in the winter because it's helping you to have a sense of, you know, artificial light, but it's a sense of that there's light in front of you. Um, the other thing that it really does well for is mood, of course, and keeps you happy, but it also helps you to set your sleep and wake cycles because in dark places, we tend, our, our, our cave membranes tend to get confused when we're not exposed to a rhythmic set of light to wake us up and darkness to put us asleep because if it's dark constantly, that confuses the brain in the pineal gland. And that pineal gland that produces the melatonin doesn't often produce melatonin properly and we get a confused brain and hence insomnia. So light therapy can be extremely useful for anyone with insomnia, anyone with seasonal affective disorder, depression, anxiety, anything that comes out as a result of being in dark weather for a long time. I also like to think of light therapy for when you've got the case of the grumpies. You're just grumpy and irritable. Light therapy can be extremely beneficial. Now, the next type of light therapy that I wanted to talk about today was red light therapy. And this red light therapy is one of the therapies that some of my patients get confused with infrared. Now, red light therapy penetrates into the skin at a little bit less of a depth than infrared. Red light, you can see because it's in our visible spectrum of light. It's between 630 and 700 nanometers, which are the red visible spectrum of light. Now, infrared, you can't see. It's invisible light. It's between 700 and 1200 nanometers, and it penetrates much deeper into your body. Some say even up to three inches. Most research goes between one and two inches for the depth that infrared can penetrate into the body. Now, infrared works a little bit differently because infrared uses heat, the heat that's emitted from the light waves to create a response. So it's pretty cool. All right, so that's the difference between those three. Now, we do have other lights. We have blue and green light in particular, and those lights do have an effect on the skin as well. I'm not going to go into that today, maybe in a later podcast. This one is just all about the generics in terms of how we can use red light, infrared light, and full spectrum light to help us to feel better, improve our mood, but also help us with detoxification, weight loss, so metabolism factors, also re relieving pain, increasing circulation, and increasing blood flow in the body. So that being said, I want you to be thinking about if you have tissue issues, so by that I mean, do you have cellulite? Do you have feet and hands that are particularly cold? Do you have scar tissue in particular areas that hurts immensely and hasn't healed properly? Well, these are ways that you can utilize light to help to treat these things. Now, another biggie is, is generally I mentioned detoxification because a lot of people have trouble sweating and infrared therapy can help you to sweat and detox your body because it's penetrating to a deeper level. It's also going to be able to get heat to some of your tissues and organs that are deeper in there below your muscles. And that's kind of cool. So something to think about in that case. Now, another thing is that when we have damage to a tendon or a ligament or a muscle, oftentimes it doesn't get a lot of great circulation. And a lot of times when there's been an injury, that also sets up those, those areas for not getting a lot of circulation. And the cool thing about heat therapies like infrared heat, it can promote the rebuilding of injured tissue that's deep in the body because it stimulates your connective tissue cells to repair. And this also can happen with red light therapy, but remember it's on a more superficial level. So what you have to look at is, okay, where is my issue? Is it deep? So perhaps you need your liver to move a little bit better. Maybe you have a fatty liver. Maybe you have a liver that's been damaged by chronic alcohol use, or maybe you have hepatitis 
and your liver is not what it used to be. These are types of things that you can use um, to help your liver. Also, another big common issue that I have a lot of folks dealing with right now is fatty liver disease. And there's not a lot of great treatments for it. Yes, you can take milk thistle for clearing out your liver enzymes, you know, basically healing the liver a little bit and detoxifying it. But there's nothing like a good infrared type of treatment for detoxifying the body and helping to cir get circulation to organs and in particular your liver, your intestines, things of that nature. Okay, so let's go into some of the specifics as to the formats that I like to use these different therapies. So, so what are the tools that I like to, to get these particular therapies in? So my first one is infrared. I use something called a TDP lamp in my office. And these lamps go over where someone's hurting or if someone's particular, I feel their tissue, like their feet are super cold. I'd love to put these lamps over that area. TDP stands for Tading Dian Sibo Pu, which translates into special electromagnetic spectrum lamp. So for short, TDP lamp. And if you come into my office in Tacoma, I have one in each of my treatment rooms because I believe that the treatments work better if I have this TDP lamp, which is emitting infrared. And, and so we are looking at infrared light and what it's doing is we can't see the light, but it's emitting waves via heat because the TDP lamp is made of a mineral lamp. So there's a mineral plate in the lamp and electricity is applied to that plate that's inside the lamp and the waves, so the electromagnetic waves of that lamp take the ions that are on that mineral plate, so the minerals are ionized, and those ions go into the human body. And according to different research, there's kind of a range between one and, and three and a half inches is what is considered the, the depth that these can penetrate. Now I will tell you this, I've been using TDP lamps for over 10 years now and when I lived in the mountains in Colorado and it would be negative 13 out and I felt like I was cold to like my core, boy, if I laid on my table and let my TDP lamp hit my abdomen and just hang out like that for about 10, 15 minutes, I was warm for the rest of the day. So take that and, and think about that for a couple minutes there. All right, so the TDP lamp's pretty cool. I like it for leaving muscle pain, joint inflammation, and I like it for soft tissue injury. So if someone sprained an ankle or if someone is dealing with a tear in a ligament or tendon, something of that nature, it's just amazing for increasing circulation. And if you can get blood flow to any damaged area, you're going to help the body to heal that area. Because anytime you get blood flow there, you're going to get oxygen, you're going to get healing nutrients, you're going to get good white blood cells in and create a good response, a good healing response. So another thing is that with this heat, you can also improve range of motion because you're heating up scar tissue. And it allows for me to work even better using my cupping and gua sha in addition to my needles to help get to treatment or, or acupuncture points, but also to help to break up scar tissue. And so I absolutely love my TDP lamp and it's probably one of my favorite ways to get in the infrared light into to patients. And TDP lamps have only been around since 1978, but they make a huge impact. So now thanks to Amazon, you can buy them online. They're all pretty much coming out of China. Um, I'll be honest that they're not the best made in terms of the, the platforms that they're on, but you can definitely get one. They're about a hundred, 150 bucks. You can get one and modify it to make sure that it's stronger. So something of that nature to look into on Amazon, you just Google or not Google on Amazon. That makes no sense. Just search on Amazon TDP lamps. Now, another way to get in infrared light is via a sauna. And you can get a one person portable sauna where you like zip yourself into it. It's kind of interesting. That's, you know, three feet by three and a half feet tall and, you know, wide. And you can get those for like 200 bucks. And it's kind of interesting. Um, those things there, they've got like a little chair you put on in them and boom, there you go. 
Now, I personally, if I had my way, I would have a two-person sauna in my home. Those are $800 to about $2,000, and they're about four feet wide, six and a quarter feet tall, and three and a quarter feet in terms of depth. Now, unfortunately, my basement is not that tall. And I really want one. So we might end up figuring out something for my garage. So there you have it. But at this point, I really like the concept of having a sauna because the TDP lamps, they're not that wide. I mean, you've got the lamp is probably six inches in diameter at the most. And, and that's not going to cover your whole body. You're going to be focusing on a certain part of the body. So the sauna gets the whole body. And, and that's pretty amazing because... I would love to focus on my whole body in terms of getting heat and having good healing and detoxification. Plus, if you have cellulite, these these types of TDP lamps, but also the sauna is great for helping to detoxify that tissue that doesn't get heat to it. So something to keep in mind. So that's how I use the infrared in my life and uh, dream about it in terms of having my own sauna. Now, red light, let's talk about that for a little bit because this is a confusing factor. A lot of people think that red light and infrared light, those terms are interchangeable and they're not because red light we can see and it's a less of a nanometer of a wavelength. So it's still in our visible light length, whereas infrared is out of our visible light. We can't see it. All we feel is the heat from it. So keep that in mind. That's the difference between these two in terms of just straight out what you see. Now, in terms of benefits, the red light is not going to penetrate as deep. This is going in about a half inch or so into the body, whereas the infrared can go from one inch to three and a half inches based on what I've seen in research. Now, I know that in, in my own mind that infrared does go pretty deep because like I mentioned before, I felt it in my belly for hours, pretty much the whole day when I would use that on my abdomen. Now, in terms of red light, red light therapy is really great for rejuvenating skin. And so it's collagen building, it's reducing wrinkles, it's repairing sun damage. It also works with activating the lymphatic system, which a lot of us have trouble with our skin. So say acne or say we have hyperpigmentation, so, so dark spots on our skin, it's because we can't detoxify our skin and it's because the lymphatic system's backed up. And if you want to know more about the lymphatic system, I have a whole podcast on how to get it moving. But the red light therapy is one of the ways that you can get things going. Now, the other cool thing about red light therapy is if you have a scar or you just had surgery, something of that nature, it can help to beautify that healing skin and, and really help with healing and reduce the, the look of that scar. The other cool thing is that red light therapy can relieve pain, especially if you have cutaneous nerve issues like neuropathy, things of that nature. It also is really great for boosting your immune system and for giving you that happy feeling. So it works much like full spectrum light therapy, so it can help with seasonal affective disorder. So I absolutely love having the red light around. In, in my office, I use a product called Saluma, which is it's kind of this bendable mat that can go over faces, can go over arms, legs, can be focused on for a particular heat. Um, I also use it if someone has difficulty with, um, I guess you could say, with, with healing of, of tissue if they've scraped themselves and they're not healing well. So someone who is diabetic in that case would be an example. It also helps really well with hair loss and stimulates regrowth of hair. So something to keep in mind. It also can bring moisture to your skin too because you're vasodilating. So you're opening up your, your tiny little capillaries and getting blood flow there. And so by getting blood flow to tissue that normally doesn't have blood flow, you can help with moisturizing that tissue as well. So that's pretty awesome. So I love red light therapy for building collagen. So anti-aging also for acne, rosacea, sun damage, all of those things, just amazing for that. And, and it can also improve skin tone in general. So something to think about. I mean, if, even if you've had like stretch marks, um, acne, the, the red marks from acne like, that are left over from picking, if you're one of those kind of folks, or even just the, the marks left from acne, be extremely useful. So something to keep in mind. And there's a ton of products on the market that are handheld. I like ones that are 
bendable, kind of like my Saluma product, but also there are wall units now that have red light. There's a company called Juva, J-O-O-V, or no, it's J-O-O-V, Juve, not Juva. Um, and I have a link to it at the end of my podcast notes on my website at drjkrausnd.com. If you're looking for this, I've actually put a link to all of the products that I mentioned. Now, of course, public service announcement, I'm not getting any money from any of these companies. I just happen to use these products because I like them and have found them useful along the way. So there you have it. But there, there are plenty of different options out there for helping you with all of these different conditions. And honestly, with red light therapy, you can find some that are pretty cost-effective um, for a home unit. You're looking at around $200 in this case. Now, the coolest part really that I, I like to use the red light therapy for, like I said before, is skin in terms of anti-aging, but really the coolest part is speeding wound healing. Because if someone cuts themselves pretty good and has had stitches, they have the stitches removed, this is awesome to have in, in place to help with healing the, the skin. So something to keep in mind, I, I do use it for that just to try to boost that um, kind of as an added bonus for my patients in my office. Now, another cool thing is that there's a lot of products out there now that have the combination of red light therapy and near and so the infrared therapy. The only problem I have with it is it seems that most of those products, I haven't seen great ratings on them. I don't have a combination product myself. I actually use products individually. So I have a red light therapy device um, the Saluma on its own, and I have my infrared TDP lamps that I use on their own. But there are some more combination units out there that hopefully with time, they'll get better. Now, for example, let me give you some details in terms of products I do like. So if you're interested in these items for helping you out, you can go and check them out and see what you think. The Buer, so B-E-U-R-E-R, -E -E infrared heat lamp. This is like a tabletop unit. This is one that I recommend to my patients who really like the TDP lamp, but want something smaller, not as clunky as the TDP lamps, because the TDP lamps look like a lamp with like a weird <laughs> arm stretching out that has the lamp on it. They're kind of strange. Not something that are is typical that you would want in your house unless you are an acupuncturist. But the Buer, the B-E-U-R-E-R -E -R infrared heat lamp is something that I definitely recommend to patients. It's 60 bucks and you can totally use that for deep penetration um, of those wavelengths into your skin so you can work to help with circulation in organs, circulation in an area that's been damaged, cellulite, things of that nature. So check that product out. You can get it on Amazon too. I think it's even on Prime. I think one of my patients said the other day. So something to keep in mind on that one. Now, my favorite full spectrum light therapy is Philips Wake Up Light. I, I There's a bunch of different versions of it um, that I've seen over the years, but the one that's kind of the most popular right now is a colored sunrise stimulation alarm clock. And there's also a sunset fading, um, component to it too, which is kind of cool because I think a lot of us have messed up our sleep wake cycles because we live in places that are dark or we don't go outside into nature in the winter time. And or just in general, we just don't go outside and spend enough time outside to be close to nature and that, that, connection to light and dark. And also there's a lot of folks out there who are working second shift or third shift that also confuses the body's connection to light and dark cycles. And then there's also just the flat out, we use a lot of screens. We pay attention to our computers right until we go to bed. That doesn't help for the pineal gland because now your little gland in your brain that produces melatonin to help you sleep. Anytime it's seen light, it's, it's confused. It thinks that it's light all the time. Now, one of the big arguments that I get from a lot of patients is, well, if I'm looking at my computer screen, isn't that like light therapy? Not exactly. It's a little light, but it's not as strong as light therapy. These are a hundred times brighter than natural light. And so it's really a good blast to the body to help it to work with the wake up and sleep cycle. So with light therapy, I typically have folks working on it half hour to an hour in the morning and then mid morning also getting another exposure to it. And then that's it. You don't want to do it after that because you don't, you want your body to let 
it kind of fall into the afternoon and the fading of the sunlight. So just thinking about the natural cycles that we have for light and dark. Now, the other light, so full spectrum light therapy box that I like is a Verilux, V-E-R-I-L-U-X, Happy Light. It's an LED light therapy tablet. You can bring it all around. It's like a portable thing and you can bring it traveling. You can also bring it for work because I have a lot of patients that get up super early. It's dark when they leave the house. It's dark when they come home from work, especially when you're in October, November, and the days are getting shorter and shorter in December as well. And so it's crucial to have this, this full spectrum light, um, around. And those are the two products I like for the full spectrum light. And gosh, I, I can't tell you how much I've used the full spectrum lights and not even had to put people on antidepressants. Um, it makes a world of difference. It can save you from having to take a ton of supplements too, like 5-HTP, which is a precursor to serotonin to keep you happy. I just find them absolutely useful for helping to regulate your body, just resetting it and giving it back its natural rhythms of light and, and darkness. So something to keep in mind. Now, my, my favorite full body red light therapy is something called J-O-O-V-V. And that one you can find online, you can find on Amazon too. It retails for about $7.95, so it's a little bit more expensive. But it's something that you can hang on a wall and stand in front of. You could actually lay on the bed and have it on the wall and and um, be you have to be close to it, of course, but because you have to get you know there's a certain distance that you can um, you can't go past because of course then it won't those those uh, light waves won't get to you. But I find the the wall units decent, especially in a doctor's office. I could see how that'd be useful. Your patient stands in front of it for a certain amount of time and turning from one side to the other. So something to keep in mind. Um, there are also pads, so light therapy pads. I haven't found them to be as useful. A lot of folks note that they don't penetrate as, so, as well into the bar body um, compared to the lamps. So something to keep in mind if you're looking at some of the heating pads, some of the heating pads also have other minerals in them as well. Just do your research on those. I'll be honest, I don't use those right now in my practice. So I don't know as much as I do about the infrared and the other lights. So essentially, how long do these effects last? Because a lot of people are going to be, well, is this just temporary? Is it like for a couple of minutes or, or does this last? Well, officially we found that effects can last for up to six hours and some cases up to 24 hours and even three months if we're using the red light therapy once a week. And in particular, red light therapy for the skin um, can last up to three months if you're using it once a week. And that's what research has found. Now, in terms of the infrared effects can last for six hours in that case. And I think that's that's doable in terms of detoxing because we do have the possibility if we're, we're in a lamp or a situation, so we have the TDP lamp on us for too long, you can get a burn, especially if it's too close to you. You can get a headache, you can be nauseous, irritable, dehydrated, just like if you've been in a sauna for too long. And so I think with the infrared, it's, it's useful that it only lasts six hours in terms of increased circulation, but also makes a, a case for why you would want to use it regularly in terms of helping with blood flow to your organs and things of that nature. And so typically in my office, if I'm really working on healing or detoxifying a patient, I'm trying to get them into my office twice a week to help with boosting that circulation to the damaged tissue. And so two boosts a week, huge for the body compared to if you left it to its own devices, it speeds up healing quite fast. Um, in terms of having a sauna at home and being able to do that every night, well, that's a great for detox. I think that would be amazing to be able to do that every night. Now, for all intents and purposes, I don't know if that would be a good idea because day in, day out, um, that's a lot of heat to the body and a lot of circulation, which depending on where you're at with your own disease process, say you have lowered immunity, things of that nature, I, I typically have folks considering cycling. Um, through the sauna and doing it up to three times a week versus every single day. So something to just keep in mind in terms of safety here, because there are things that can happen and you can overdo it on, on all of these different lights. Um, in particular, though, I really think for the red light therapy to see changes in your skin 
especially with fine lines and wrinkles, you need at least two months of consistent home treatments at least two times a week. You got to do it um, a little bit more frequently, even though research has found that the red light therapy effects can last up to three months. I think that it's you've got to use it at least two times a week, even though the research is saying if you use it once a week. I, I find two times a week, especially for the fine lines and wrinkles and kind of correcting damage of aging. So keep that in mind there. So all that being said, I've given you a little bit of breakdown of the different products I use from the TDP infrared lamp to the saunas, which by the way, one of the best saunas that I found out there for in-home units are called JNH Lifestyles Infrared Saunas. You can find them online at jnhlifestyles.com. I put the link on my website at drjkrausnd.com. I think it's really if you can afford it and you want to put a unit in your home, I think the JNH Lifestyles products are some of the best. They're made out of Canadian hemlock wood. They're they're high quality products. So something to check out. They even sell them on Amazon, which is kind of cool too. Um, if you're looking for something a little smaller, possibly a juve light that you can put upright on a wall and get a combo unit of, you can get red light and infrared for that one and see how it goes for you. Like I mentioned, I haven't seen great reviews on them, but hey, you know, I think any light's going to help more than no light. So there you have it. Now, in terms of a infrared lamp that you might want at home, the Buer B-E-U-R-E-R lamp, um, portable one you can put on top of a counter might be the most useful in that case. And then keep in mind, if you're really struggling with anxiety, depression, seasonal affective disorder, the full spectrum light boxes are where you want to go towards. And perhaps the Philips Wake Up Light or a Verilux Happy Light, either one, something to consider in terms of helping with mood. Now those full spectrum lights, that's all they're going to do. They're not going to help with your skin. They're going to help with mood. They're going to help with dealing with seasonal affective disorder and insomnia. The red light therapy in the infrared light, um, those guys will help with skin and tissue healing. Keep in mind that infrared penetrates deeper. And so if your issue is deeper, say you've got a deeper scar, say you've got a lot of scar tissue from a surgery where you had hardware placed or something of that nature, maybe you have a bladder sling, infrared is what you want. Whereas if you're looking at more superficial damage, such as a light scar, you have fine lines, wrinkles, acne, that's when you're wanting to go for the red light because it doesn't penetrate as deep. It gets to the surface and stimulates healing on that level. So basically thinking about what is your goal with this light therapy first, then investigating from there. All right, so on my website at drjkrausnd.com, I have links to everything I talked about. I even put a link on there for red light therapy um, options so that you can kind of see all of the different ways you can incorporate red light, infrared light, and, and light therapy into your life to help with increasing circulation, to help with metabolism, to help with detoxification, to help with moving your lymphatic system, which I truly believe the more bog down your lymphatic system is, the more possibilities for getting sick you have. And there's a direct connection with bogged down lymphatic systems and cancer. So all that being said, I think that light therapy in the forms of the red light and the infrared light are amazing for helping with your overall metabolism and body function. And then that full spectrum light therapy, amazing for helping with mood. And I highly encourage folks to take a look at those and perhaps find a way to use both in your life. And gosh, you will notice changes. And seriously, it does not take that long to notice changes. After using things consistently for two weeks, you will start to notice some changes come on board. So check those out. If you have questions, hit me up on the website, make some comments. Love to hear if you have favorite products or anything you tried, let me know. And keep the questions coming on the podcast questions because this one actually is definitely, this episode was definitely born out of some of my patients' questions, but also a question on my podcast. So keep it coming. Thanks again for listening. Once again, you survived another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krauss. Have a great day, whatever you're doing. Thanks for tuning in to The Health Fix, the podcast all about taking control of your health, rebelling against aging, and having fun every day. A lot of patients ask me, do you think I'm aging too fast? So, I created an evaluation checklist for you to see for yourself. Plus, 
I created a resource guide to help you slow down the aging process right now. You can find it for free on my website, drjkrausnd.com. If you like this podcast, help get the word out to others by liking it and rating it. If you'd like more natural health tips and want to join our Facebook community where I interact daily, click on the Join Group button on our website at drjkrausnd.com.